South Korea has lofty goals for its fledgling space program that needed one giant leap of faith in a search engine to get it off the ground. Treaties between established space powers like the US, Russia, and France prohibit certain tech transfers to aspiring space club nations like South Korea, leaving its small team of pioneering rocket scientists to scour the web for ideas. We looked up on the internet to compare and find a suitable launch vehicle. What caught our eye was the SpaceX Falcon Merlin engine. We developed Nuri, looking at the picture and using it as a point of reference to design. Kerosene is a fuel tank. This is an actual Nuri three-stage launch vehicle, not a replica. And Bloomberg News got an exclusive and unprecedented tour of the entire Naro Space Center, where the first two Nuri rockets were launched, including the first successful test mission last year. What did you feel when it launched for the first time? Ah, oh, my heart is beating fast here. <laughs> and praying, please. Pray, pray. The next launch, perhaps by as early as this May, will deploy actual commercial satellites, powered into orbit by those SpaceX-inspired but locally made engines, and they're nearly 300 tons of thrust. We're trying to build a SpaceX-like company. It's a model that marries Elon Musk's cost efficiencies with South Korea's prowess in advanced chips. At present, the Nuri costs about 80 million U.S. dollars per launch, compared to 67 million for the more powerful, larger payload Falcon 9. That's largely why later this year, South Korea's government-run Kari will transfer its commercial rocket launching to a private company, rocket engine maker Hanwha Aerospace. We're seeking to see if Hanwha can make this Nuri rocket profitable, but it's a very hard task. Elon Musk has made a very <laughs> tight market for other companies. This is South Korea's main launch center and launch pad for the last two Nuri rockets and the next one that will be launched sometime later in 2023. But over here, they're going to expand it because they have larger ambitions for destinations further afield, including the moon and beyond. And liftoff of Artemis 1. Namely, participation in the NASA-led Artemis program to return man and payloads to the moon. National security, too, will be a key driver at a time when North Korea is improving its rocket capabilities and a sanctioned Russia means one less rocket launch provider available to South Korea. It's important to find cheap launch vehicles from a business perspective, but I think it is very important for the country to have the ability to put satellites or things like this into space when we want to. To get into the once fairly exclusive but now increasingly crowded Global Space Club, South Korea may emulate another American accomplishment, the Kennedy Space Center, to transform these sleepy islands in the nation's south into an aerospace industry epicenter. Stephen Engel, Bloomberg News at the Naro Space Center, Gohong, South Korea.